Michigan's economy flourished in the heyday of the auto industry. So why is it so hard to break into the middle class today? Whatever happened to the American dream? A middle class job that pays enough for you to buy a house, raise a family, and maybe even take a vacation every once in a while. The high paying, low skilled jobs once promised to high school graduates by the manufacturing sector now seem to be in Michigan's rearview mirror, and the cost of a traditional four year college education has skyrocketed. So what does it take to win a middle class life in America today? Earlier this year, Emily Hatsi Georgia was handed the keys to her first home. This here is actually one of my favorite spaces for the light that is in the room. I'm really excited. I am a little bit nervous to be completely honest, but it feels really good. At 27 years old, she's already hit some of life's big milestones, not just homeownership, but also marriage and children. But her path to where she is today, renovating a historic home for herself and her two boys in downtown Howell, wasn't exactly traditional. Immediately after high school, I met my husband and we got married. About 10 months later, we welcomed my firstborn, George. So I chose just to be around for my family and I went straight into retail. After a second son and a failed attempt to run a restaurant together, Emily and her husband ended their marriage. I moved back home with my parents. I started working retail again, but because of the hours, I wasn't getting the time I wanted to spend with the boys. So I actually got a job with a financial institution, which gave me a Monday through Friday schedule, and it was fantastic. And then they went through a restructuring process and I got let go ultimately. And I was really upset. I was living at home with my parents. I had no degree. With just her high school education, Emily was stuck in low paying jobs with a middle class life far out of reach. So what does it mean to be middle class? Economists will tell you it's a household making between two thirds to two times the national median income. The average person might just say it's a comfortable lifestyle. Okay. If you're middle class in America right now, you might argue that right now is the high point. Middle class household income is higher now than it's ever been before. Plus consumer prices are a lot lower now compared to back then. And also we just have a lot of consumer goods that we didn't have back then. Cell phones, big screen TVs, air conditioning, cars that last more than 100,000 miles, air travel is accessible to the middle class now. So if you're middle class, now is the time to be alive. But the number of Americans in the middle class has been on a steady decline for decades. In 1971, 61% of Americans were considered middle class. By 2016, that number was down to 52%. Michigan has pretty much followed the nationwide trend. We were once one of the most prosperous states in the US. In 1959, Michigan had the 11th highest median family income in the country. By 2017, it had dropped to 34th. We've gone from being, say, California down to Alabama, if you will. So relatively speaking, compared to the other 49 states, we've lost ground. And that's almost completely due to the decline of the big three auto companies. The big three, Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler, were instrumental in building Michigan's middle class. It started in the early 1900s with Henry Ford's game-changing $5 a day assembly line jobs, which paid workers significantly more than other factory jobs at that time. A couple decades later, auto workers won the right to unionize following the Flint sit-down strike of 1936 and 37. Workers occupied a GM plant and forced it to shut down for 44 straight days. As the 20th century rolled on, collective bargaining allowed workers to band together for better wages, workplace rights, and benefits like healthcare and vacation time. Modern manufacturing practices, lower consumer prices, and the end of the Great Depression and World War II all meant life got pretty good for a lot of people. In terms of ease of entering the middle class, it was just a lot easier back then because you could graduate from high school, get a job at the auto plant, put your 30 years in, earn enough money for a nice middle class lifestyle, then retire with a pension. The auto industry was booming and Detroit was the epicenter, but its ripple effects were felt across the state. Flint, Saginaw, Lansing, even the western side of the state, all had huge sources of manufacturing employment. You think about all the jobs that manufacturing would support on top of just the actual manufacturing, the restaurants around the plant, shops in the downtowns and so forth. It was really auto manufacturing that caused Michigan to be so prosperous during that time period. 
In the 1960s, the big three collectively were responsible for 85% of all cars sold in the U.S. But everything changed in the 1970s. When oil reserves are running. Made off 20 guys yesterday. On the verge of bankruptcy. Well, to see a machine doing your job. Either way, it's going to cost you jobs, no matter which way you go. What have you had to say? It's not very much to look forward to here anymore. A major recession, fueled in part by the Middle East oil embargo, lasted for most of the decade. Drivers bought more fuel-efficient foreign cars, while purchases of gas-guzzling domestic vehicles dropped off. For the first time, the big three started to feel a pinch. At the same time, economic and social changes across the country led to a significant productivity slowdown, stagnating wages. Also, right at that time period, the divorce rate skyrockets with the advent of no-fault divorce. Out of wedlock births increase over that time period, which might have a role in terms of financial difficulties for households. So you have economic changes, and you also have social, economic, cultural changes. It's hard to disentangle the effect of all those things happening. That 1970s stagnation in average worker pay is still being felt today, despite gains in productivity and record profits on Wall Street. Unions weakened, and union membership declined, reducing pressure to raise wages. Then, of course, came the 2008 recession, which brought with it the bankruptcy of GM and Chrysler. The housing market famously crashed, and auto sales plummeted too. So a lot fewer cars being produced, a lot fewer auto workers needed, lots of people get laid off permanently as a result. Dozens of auto plants have been shuttered and eventually demolished. The big three market share in the U.S. has dropped from 85% to 44%, as Michigan lags behind the rest of the nation's record post-recession recovery. The middle class is not dead, but it's harder than ever to find an easy route to that comfortable lifestyle. The middle class is here. It's here to stay. But it's going to be more difficult to stay middle class or even grow if you don't have education. Higher education is not exactly a level playing field. Adjusted for inflation, the average cost of a four-year degree at a public university in the U.S. has more than doubled since the late 1980s. But a traditional college education isn't the only way to get employable skills. There is still plenty of manufacturing happening in the U.S., but automation has led to fewer jobs, and those that are left generally require higher skills. We see our big three investing hundreds of millions of dollars in mobility and in autonomous vehicles and rideshare services, because that's really where we're going. Brandon Tucker is Dean of Advanced Technologies and Public Service Careers at Washtenaw Community College. His school is offering a first-in-the-nation program to fill the skills gap in auto manufacturing. Employers are fishing for talent. They're continuing to tap us on the shoulder and say, please, keep doing what you're doing because we're helping to build that talent pipeline. That's where Emily Hatsi Giorgio found a road to a financially sustainable life for herself and her two boys. After a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her dad, she began to think seriously about a career in the auto industry. I asked him about working in automotive because he had been working at General Motors for 30 years. And he was very happy with his career. He thought that it was a really great idea. So that's when I started to look into programs that would set me up to go into the automotive industry. With childcare help from her parents and financial assistance in the form of grants and scholarships, Emily enrolled in a two-year automotive service technology program at Washtenaw's Advanced Transportation Center. So my first day of class was terrifying. I knew nothing about automotive. Plus it's a male-dominated program, which is intimidating in itself to be the minority in a group. And my friend Matt, he would joke with me, you know, you could barely even hold an impact gun when you first got here, and now you're pulling engines out by yourself. Emily is a prime example of someone who saw the dream and the promise of what education could do, came here and sacrificed, and before she even graduated, had a job offer. Emily landed an internship at the GM Proving Grounds in Milford, which led to a full-time job as a vehicle safety technician. She now earns three times what she did in retail and works in the same building as her dad. When he entered the automotive industry, degrees weren't required. And now you can't even enter a technician position without an associate. So it is significantly different than when he started. So now being able to see what his job is and be able to see him at work in passing and go sit in his office for a few minutes to talk, that's a really incredible experience. In addition to restoring her home and raising two boys, Emily is taking pre-engineering classes at Washtenaw and plans to eventually enroll in Eastern Michigan University's mechanical engineering program. I definitely want to be in this house for the next 10 to 15 years because I want my boys to graduate from Howell and 
I can already envision prom pictures on the porch. So this is Joseph's room. I'm going to put dinosaurs on my wall. He's going to put dinosaurs on his walls. So Modern middle class workers like Emily hold jobs that can't be automated in fields like manufacturing, healthcare, education, and the trades. The choices you make as a teenager really have a lot of weight in terms of how life shapes up down the road. So if you could graduate high school, get a skill, get a full-time job, don't have kids until you're married, and then when you're married, stay married, a middle-class lifestyle is essentially guaranteed. But of course, real life is complicated. Education and childcare can be expensive, and career paths aren't always a straight line. Everybody has their own paths and there's no timeline, so don't give up because things do get better and things do turn around and just persevere. Making it into that comfortable middle class lifestyle is still possible. It just takes a little more strategy than it used to. The evolution of Michigan's middle class has been complicated, in part because there are just so many factors involved. To learn more about the history and future of the middle class, and to find resources for potential career paths and education available to Michigan residents, head over to mlive.com slash how we got here. <laughs>